All right, so we're right where we left off in the previous video with our base. Ready for round two. We need to add these panels and bevel over this edge. But before we do that, I just want you to move the 3D cursor up to this plane here. Because when we start building these columns here next, it, it'll be really handy to have the 3D cursor there. So I have this plane selected, and I'm going to hold the Shift and the S key down to open up this little menu. And you're going to use most of these things fairly rarely, but one that you're going to use all the time is the one that is directly below. And that is cursor to select it. And that's going to move, when I click that, it's going to move the cursor right to that plane. So we'll just do that for now. But in this video, I want you to do these inset panels and roll over that bevel. Oh, this is going to be easy. So I'm in the edit mode, I'm in the face select mode, and I'm going to select one of the faces on this slanted side of the base. I'm going to hold the shift key just like you do when you're selecting documents on your desktop, right? If you want to select multiple files, you can hold the shift key down and add to a selection. So that's not a Blender thing, it's a computer thing. If you accidentally select something you didn't want, you can just hold the shift key down and deselect it by clicking on it again. I'm going to hit the 9 key on my full-size keyboard to flip me around to the other side. That's a handy trick. And if you don't have the full-size keyboard, then you can just hold down the middle mouse button and orbit back around. So you know you've got all of those faces selected. Now what we're going to want to do is inset these faces. We've used the inset tool before up here, but it's going to be a little different on this step because if I move my cursor off to the side and I hit the I key and I push in toward the center, well, you can see what's happening is that it's insetting all four faces together. And that's not quite what we want. We want to be each one of those to be individually inset. So all we need to do right now is kind of eyeball the, the space above and below the orange bits there to make sure that, that looks about right. And then I'm going to click and then we're going to have this little adjustment panel pop open and it may be closed down over here. If it's closed, just click on the little uh, triangle there. And we can see there's a lot of interesting things that we can do here with the inset faces. We can, you know, decide whether we want the outside selected or the inside or whatever. There's lots of things that you can play around with later on. We can even like, you know, change the size after we've created it. We, if we realize that, oh yeah, that's not quite, you know, I want it to be a little bit bigger, we can change it there. And you can actually even do this sort of like bulge thing by pushing things. That's sort of an interesting, you know, result. Lots of really cool things that you can do. I'm just going to click in here and zero that out because that's not what we want. What we do want is individual, right? We want to individually inset these faces. So I'm going to check that little individual box. I'm going to see that, oh, okay, that's the result we wanted. I've got each of the faces inset equally on all the sides. And if we zoom around to the other side, we'll see that they're all indeed done that way. Now, the next step I'm going to show you here is to extrude these inward. Now, there are some options. We've just been using basic the basic extrude region here, but there's some really terrific ones, including this extrude manifold, which is very useful. It's brand new to this version. That means that it just kind of deletes the extra geometry as you cut in and out of objects. That's very cool. If you've worked in SketchUp before, that's very much like a SketchUp uh, mode. What we're actually going to do is this extrude long normals and the extrude individuals down over here. And extrude cursor is really cool, too, because you can kind of just like extrude things by clicking on it. It's great for making organic shapes and stuff. Um, but I'm not going to have you do the buttons there. I want you to do the keyboard shortcut for all those options, and that is Alt or Option E. So just using the E for extrude, and we're going to want to extrude faces along normals, and you'll see what that does. Now a normal, if you don't know what that term is before, is just a thing you can think of a little um, arrow pointing off at 90 degrees from the face of the object. So the normal for this panel up on top is pointing straight up. The normal for this face over here is pointing straight out. Well, these are going to be angled a little bit. And you're going to see that right now when we do that command. We'll go extrude along normals. And then if I move my cursor in one direction, it insets them. And if I move my cursor in the other direction, it points them outward. And you can see how they're going out, but also up a little bit, because they're going in the direction of that little arrow that's pointing off this slanted face. What we actually want to do is make it look more like that. Don't go so far in that they're intersecting. That's going to cause some problems. But just make sure that you're insetting it to, let me get it right there, to right about there, somewhere in there. That looks pretty good. I mean, you can make it more shallow if you want or a little deeper. It's up to you. I'm going to click something like that. So I've got a nice deep shadow in there when we're adding it later on to our scene. And that looks pretty good. And so you can see that we've done all of those faces all at the same time. That's very cool. Now, where's our model over here. Okay, so we've got this rounded over curved edge. That rounded over curved edge is called a bevel. And this bevel is a hugely useful tool, but we are usually beveling edges. You can bevel vertices. So if I wanted to make it look like these corners over here, where I wanted this hard edge to be here, but I wanted it to be rounded on this edge, on the point, we can do that by um, beveling a vertice. But usually what you're doing is beveling edges. So I'm going to hit the 2 key on the number, on the, the key, the at sign, 2 key on my keyboard. That's going to get us into the edge mode. And I could come over here and select just one edge and do that same trick like I did before by holding down the shift key. But a lot of times you want to select very long edges. And 
one of the ways that you can select an edge loop is by here I'll just deselect is hold down the alt or option key and click on an edge and if you're holding down that key the alt key and the option key as you go around it's going to select the whole ring of faces all the way around. Now it may not always be the way you want it to be and you may have to move to a different place in the line to get it to go you know, up and down this way instead of from side to side or whatever. You can do a little experimenting with that but usually it's pretty easy and in this case there's no option. You click anywhere on this line it's not going to matter because the only ring that we have going there's no ring going this way there's only a ring going this way. So we're all set. Bevel is so useful, you can do so many things with it that it has a, a really easy keyboard shortcut as well, and that's Control and B. Control B for Bevel, just like all the other shortcuts that start with the first letter. And we're just going to move the cursor around until we get this chamfered edge. Now, don't go so far that you're, you know, you're getting the geometry kind of intersecting again, so that's causing us problems there. Or if it's so little, you know, you don't have much to work with right there. Go as far as you can before it starts to undercut the panel above it, you know, that little slab above it. Something like that is about right. So I'm going to click right over there, and then we're going to get this a menu, our little adjustment menu to pop up here, and there's lots of things that we can do. But one of the ones we can do is add more segments. Right now it's only one segment, which means it's, it's going straight like a chamfer. And what we want is this rounded over curve. And we don't need to add too many. We can come in here and change these numbers in a lot of ways. You can click on here and scrub through this so I can scrub up to 100 very quickly. That's way more faces than we need and go all the way back down to one. You can move them one at a time by clicking on these little arrows. Four is what we want. But I'll go back this way and go back to one. Or you can click in here and type in an exact number and then hit the enter key to get you exactly uh, the number that you want. So any one of those. We want four. Go and add four. Four is a little blocky still, but you know we have to make a lot of these and they're going to be far away. Like, look, this looks pretty good. This has four segments too and it's not very far away from us even and it still looks pretty well rounded so that's always kind of the balance between how many faces do you really need you know the more faces you add the more vertices you add the bigger your file is going to be the slower it's going to render and certainly if you were exporting things to game engines or whatever you got to keep those numbers really low as possible um, so four is more than enough for what we want and there's lots more to play with in here but we won't worry about those now we'll, we'll come back to the bevel before we're done here with our column and look at a few more of these but that's enough for now that's pretty much it now we are set up to the same uh, step here. We've got the cursor already up on top here. So when we come back in the next video, we're going to add these columns up on top. And we're trucking along here with our columns. I'll be back.